Hello you beautiful people. Today we are back with another waiver wire must roster players video. So I'm not going to go ahead and comment on my long term ads from last week because you know still remains to be seen but so far they're all looking really solid but we'll go ahead and look at my short term picks from last week just to see how I did. Like I mentioned in my previous video I'm not one to shy away from my mistakes. I want to get better at fantasy just as you guys all do so I'm going to look at my past picks from last week see how we did see what ones we got right what ones we screwed up and just sort of move on from there so THT that was a great pickup while LeBron was out which I mentioned Monte Morris didn't have as spectacular week as I was hoping he would but he still played all right Bledsoe he was kind of lackluster I'd say that Bledsoe was definitely a miss on my part definitely not must roster Aldridge had a good week Lou Dort went nuts he's starting to cool down but he was must roster last week so I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself that one Vassell only had the two games, but he played solid. I still consider him must roster, so he's not in the video today just because I said it last time, but I would still keep Vassell for this week. Royce O'Neal had a decent week. Bain had a great week, and Metu had a great week. Sorry if I butchered his name. But yeah, overall, I think I'm going to give myself like a, a 8 out of 9 on this one, honestly, which, which is pretty solid. I mean, I don't think I screwed up any pick astronomically. Bledsoe was bad. Monte Morris was like lackluster, but I do still consider him must roster. So yeah, I'm going to give myself 8 out of 9, which isn't too bad, you know? So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get into my picks for this week. I went a little bit more in depth for you guys, so I'm going to go into head, get right into it. So we got guys that I have for people in like eight team leagues that are rostered in less than 70%. Then we're going to go ahead and move on to guys that I have that are like for middle of the pack leagues, which are like rostered in less than 40%. And then I'm going to finish it off with some guys that are in some really deep leagues. If you're in like 16 to 20 and the waivers are bone dry, there might have some sneaky pickups for you guys. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get right into it. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you're new and like the video. It really helps the channel out. But yeah, sorry for all that introduction. But as as always, got to advertise the YouTube channel. You guys know how it is. And let's just get right into the video now. All right, so we're starting off with guys rostered in less than 70% of leagues. And I genuinely don't know how most of these guys are still not rostered in 70%. But to start off, we're going to have Will Barton. Jokic is missing some more time. We don't know for sure how much it's going to be, but even when Jokic is playing, Will Barton is absolutely must roster. All the way up to like six team leagues, I would say. Like, I'm not leaving Will Barton on any waiver wires. He's only rostered in 65% of leagues, which is mind boggling to me. He is 100% must roster. He's the first person I would pick up on if he's on your waiver wire. If you guys are new, I do list these sort of in order of who I would pick up first. But yeah, Gary Trent Jr., another guy absolutely must roster. I know the Raptors roster is a bit all over the place with the injuries to OG and everything. But so far, Gary Trent has really picked it up this season. He's played really solid, had a few like really good scoring games. He's contributing a lot in the steals department. Absolutely must roster. Then we have one of my favorite players in the league. I'm putting him in every video, Jalen Brunson. I don't know how much love I have to give Jalen Brunson before everybody picks him up, but he is only rostered in 41% of leagues. Like, what are we doing here, people? I don't care if Luka's playing or not, Jalen Brunson is 1,000% must roster. I stand by it. I'm not leaving him on the waiver wires in any leagues. Maybe that's just because I love Jalen Brunson too much, but 8-team, 6-team, 1,000% Jalen Brunson is must roster. He should be rostered in way more than 41% of leagues. No question in my mind. Then we got Reggie Jackson, another very easy one to me. He's rostered in close to 70%. He's at 66 right now, so just figured I'd throw him on here for the slight few of you and that there might be in a you know he might be a little bit of a minority but Reggie Jackson should definitely still be on a roster he's got a lot of upside for the Clippers then Bobby Portis for the time that Brooke Lopez is out I mean he is probably nearing a return so Portis will his value will definitely drop off a lot when that does occur but until that time one like he is a must roster player in like every league every format he's only rostered in 36 percent of leagues and that just went up by 11 percent which is crazy to me he has the kit he's a very capable scorer, getting a lot of rebounds, playing in the absence of Brook Lopez, like I mentioned. And in that time, man, he should not be on your waiver wire. I don't care what league it is. If he is, go snatch him right now, as, as is the case with any of these guys. And then sixth on my list, Ricky Rubio, who he was first on my list last time, so I just wanted to throw him in. But he was definitely be like very, I would consider must roster out, like absolutely, man. I'm all over the place, but I, I don't understand how these guys aren't rostered. He's only rostered 57% of leagues, and it just got announced that Sexton is out for the whole season, which is just Ricky Rubio to the moon. The absolute moon, man. He's going to consistently average like around 30 plus fantasy points per game, so that's really just not someone you can leave on the waiver wire, in my opinion. I'm expecting him to probably finish the season averaging around 33 fantasy points per game in default leagues, which is really solid and definitely not waiver wire level production. And then lastly, he was in the video last week, so I won't talk about it too much. Josh Giddy remains must roster to me. I know you got to go through the growing pains of having a rookie on your team, but he's shown a lot of upside, a lot of promise so far early into his career, and I'm definitely not leaving him on my waiver wire. I'm just going to 
have him on my team, let him let ride through the struggles, and then sort of see where it comes out on the other side. But yeah, these are all my guys that are must roster, that are rostered in more leagues. Now we'll go ahead and get into the guys who are rostered in less than 40% of leagues. So today's video is sponsored by Parlay Play. Parlay Play is a social first fantasy sports operator focused on player prop game types. It allows you to connect and interact with your friends during live events. So they have football at the NFL and college level, basketball, NBA, college level, hockey, and UFC. If you guys are probably aware of, I'm more into the basketball section. So once these are all the games happening tomorrow. Once you see the game you like, you can go ahead and click on the card. If you guys aren't aware, I'm a big Celtics fan, so I'll click on the Celtics Rockets game. And here you can sort of make your picks. So they have two game modes, more or less, which is like higher or lower, and you make your predictions on how many points you think they're going to score. And you can also, I, this is my preferred game mode as you have the option of selecting parlay points, which work very similar to fantasy points, which is something I'm a huge fan of and I think it's a great feature. And then the secondary option is called hit it, where you pretty much just guess this correct value range for each player, how many points you think they're going to score exactly. And yeah, if you want to try it out first, they have a great way to do that under their free to play section where they host five free weekly contests, two for football and three for the NBA, which you can join free of charge and each contest has a prize pool of around $125. You can track your entries in real time here under my entries. You can look at your active picks and you can look at the history of your past picks. And yeah, they also like to reward their members. If you join Parlay Play, all you have to do to reach level 1 is verify your email address and enter a free to play contest and refer a friend. If you do this, you'll receive a $5 risk free entry. So yeah, if that sounds enticing to you, if you want to click the link in the description and use my code, I'll show it to you here in one sec. Click the link in the description and use the code THEBASKETBALLPHILOSOPHER when you create your account and you'll get a free $10 for signing up. There's literally no downside to it, it's a free $10 if you want to try out the app. So it's incredibly easy to sign up and you'll receive two free $5 games, so who doesn't want that? And if that's not enough, you'll also receive a $5 referral bonus for any friends that join and Parlay Play will match your first deposit up to $50. So if you put in $50, they'll match it and you'll have $100. So, if that sounds enticing to you, then I'd go ahead and click the link in the description, use the code THEBASKETBALLPHILOSOPHER and check it out. Thank you so much for to Parlay Play for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. Alright, so we're moving on to guys that are rostered in less than 40% of leagues, but aren't necessarily players that I would have for like super deep leagues, because they're definitely picked up. But we're going to go ahead and start with Aaron Gordon, and while Nikola Jokic is out, however prolonged a period that may be, Aaron Gordon is 100% must roster. I think we'll probably get very high numbers that we won't see when Jokic is playing, but the Nuggets just need somebody to step up, and it's going to be Will Barton and Aaron Gordon that are really going to fill that role in my opinion. As you can see, I have Monte Morris secondary, but I think Will Barton and Aaron Gordon are absolutely must roster for as however duration that Jokic is out. I think Gordon's must roster in that time period. Will Barton, like I already mentioned, he's must roster even with Jokic, but without Jokic, I'm 100% picking up Aaron Gordon if he's on my waiver wire this week. Then we move on to his Nuggets teammate, Monte Morris, who I did have on my video last week. And he had an alright performance, nothing crazy, but I would still consider him must roster. Just while we have Jokic out, the Nuggets are just sort of bare in terms of like fantasy numbers that can be like attribute like contributed. And I think they have to be picked up by somebody. And Monte Morse has been getting the minutes. He's getting around 30 minutes plus per game while Jokic is out. And he just has the potential to really have a really good fantasy night. I'm saying really a lot, very articulating myself well, but he's a smart point guard. I'm talking about the same players every week, it seems, but I just really consider the must roster. Like I said, low turnover rate, Sis makes the right play, can go off in the scoring department. He's a very good three-point shooter as well. And yeah, while Jokic is out, Monte Moore's must roster player for me. Then we move on to Pat Beverly, who is rostered in a surprisingly few amount of leagues for like the numbers he's putting up. He's only rostered in 9% of leagues. But if you look at his recent game log, I mean, 38 fantasy points, 35, 42... He's been putting in some decent shifts, so I would consider him must roster for this week, see if he can keep it up. His steal numbers are alright, his insists are a bit inflated, he averaged, or he had seven, two 7 assist games, his points were a bit up for his Steve season average, which is only 8.5, but you know what, while he's on the streak, the Timberwolves are playing well, Pat Bev's playing well, I'd go ahead and consider him must roster for this week, see if he can keep it up. Then moving on, we have another guy who I'm a huge fan of, is Desmond Bain. Man, remember when the Celtics traded him on draft night? I was I was in complete pain. No, no, no pun intended there. But yeah, he's been pretty solid. I mean, some people were worried about him with the return of Brooks, which I didn't really get at the time. I made a video about him and said you should definitely hold on to Desmond Bain. Turns out DeAnthony Melton was the one that was really going to take more of a hit from Brooks's return, which I'm sure most Grizzlies fans were aware of. But yeah, Desmond Bain's been really solid. He's not going to average anything close, like anything crazy, like 40 fantasy points per game. And his, his numbers are definitely down a little bit. But so far, he's averaging solidly in the 20s, high 20s, low 30s. And that's just something that I think shouldn't be on a waiver wire if you're in like a 
bigger team league like if you're probably in like a 14 team absolutely must roster 12 team i would make the case for must roster this week but yeah that's gonna do it for bane moving on to my next guys jay sean tate of the rockets only rostered in 11 percent of leagues which is way too low for jay sean tate he's averaging upward like very close to 30 fantasy points per game pretty consistently he's getting a lot of minutes the past few games as well he had 34 against okc 31 versus the knicks and I know Steven Silas is sort of playing his veterans more for some reason, but I still think Jay Sean Tate has been contributing steadily under the radar for fantasy. He's only averaging 23.7 fantasy points per game on the season, but I would expect that number to take an increase once he gets a few more games under his belt. He's capable of filling the ball up, putting the ball in the net. Very good rebounder. He doesn't really contribute too much in any of the other statistical categories, but just getting a decent amount of points and rebounds is enough to consider him a must roster in a deeper league where the waiver wires are sort of dry, but not, not too bad. We'll get into the players that are for like the 16 team and up leagues later in the video don't worry about that saw a lot of comments from you guys last week asking about where the oh where's the guys these guys are all rostered so i i had to go deep into my bag to try to find some must roster players for you guys so i hope you'll appreciate that but anyway next up josh hart he's been on a really good st run lately i'm very impressed by it i didn't really see it coming i don't consider a must roster for the entire season but when a player's in this kind of form he, they are must roster for this week i mean the pelicans they're looking rough, man. The Zion situation, losing a ton of games. It's really not looking good. They had Brandon Ingram miss some time. Josh Hart sort of stepped up into a bigger role than what was expected of him coming into the season. And so far, he's answered the call. Had a few very solid fantasy games. So I'm going to consider a must roster for this week. I would probably stream him if he's on the waiver wire in any of my deeper league teams. And then lastly on the list, just because I wanted to throw him on, this guy is more of a, like, a high upside player than a must roster but I just figured with like the firing of Luke Walton which like finally the Kings did that I don't know what took them so long maybe Marvin Bagley will get a few more minutes it's it's hard to determine how if it was like the whole Kings organization that hates Bagley or if it's just Luke Walton that hates Bagley but I mean if I'm in a 12 team was it gonna hurt pick up Marvin Bagley if I have a streaming spot for him who knows maybe he'll get a bunch of minutes it looks like Alvin Gentry might be their interim coach so I feel like Marvin Bagley has the upside to be a rosterable player who knows, this one definitely couldn't pan out, but I'm just thinking, like, if you have room, take a shot on Marvin Bagley, man. He might get the minutes, and he's a pretty solid per-minute contributor. He just hasn't been getting them, and he's sort of been whining, and looks like he's going to get traded. But who knows, this Luke Walton, the Sacramento King situation is just messy, bro. Like, who knows what's going to happen. And for the time being, I consider him being, like, a high upside player. Could, could potentially not pan out. I could definitely see that happening, so I'm not going to call him must roster, but I mean... If he's on my waiver wire, maybe I'll take a flyer on him if all these other guys are picked up. All right, ask and you shall receive. So for those of you who were saying that my players I put in my video last week were all picked up and you want some deeper leagues content, here it is. These are my guys who are like the absolute bottom of the barrel must roster if you're in like 16 team plus. The first one is definitely rostered in a few of your guys' leagues, but it's going to be JaVale McGee. I'm just going to consider him must roster for this week because Frank Kaminsky's out. So if you weren't aware of that and JaVale's on your waiver wire, I would roster him above all of these other guys just because he has the potential to get a few more minutes per game now that's just him and Aiton in the front court playing the center position so yeah he's not i mean it's javel mcgee we're not expecting anything crazy he could have a high block game get a decent amount of rebounds and a few points so definitely worth rostering him if you're in a deeper league like i mentioned then next up now we're getting into the guys for the very deep leagues first up on my list is eric gordon who's been steadily flying under the radar i feel in a lot of leagues he's only rostered in four percent of leagues and yeah, I mean, I don't know why Steven Silas is playing him, but while he is, you might as well take advantage. Like, the last two games, you played him 37 minutes and 39 minutes. Bro, you're literally... Oh man, it makes no sense to me, but whatever. I would go ahead and... I rostered him in my 20-team league. I think he is a very must-roster ad for this week if he's on your waiver wire because he's got a lot of upside in the scoring department. Very solid player, and he's getting a few assists per game in the last seven days as well. So I think it's definitely worth a stream. Like I mentioned, when your waiver wires are this... are just this the nasty, bro, when you're looking for dudes like... Eric Gordon and stuff. That's what, that's when you know you just got to get any sort of value that you can out of these players. And that's where you're going to find the sleepers that could really help you take take over your league and sort of get your rank up. So next up we have a guy that I put in last week's video and he's he's definitely kept up his production. I'm 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 never going to be able to pronounce his name properly, but Chimize Metu. I saw some people calling it the Me Too movement, which is way out of pocket, but it is it is kind of funny. I I will give I will give him that. And yeah, he's only rostered 3.5% of leagues. Playing some alright minutes for the Kings. Kings are a shit show, like I already mentioned, so it remains to be seen if that continues. But yeah, while he's getting the minutes, he's contributing a decent amount for fantasy, so for you deeper deeper leagues, I would consider him must roster, must stream for this week. Definitely a good streaming option. He's getting around 26 minutes per game, so can't complain there. And if you're getting the minutes in a deep league, that's pretty much all you can ask for. 
It's getting a few points. Had a few nice rebounding games as well. I'm going to go ahead and stream him if he's on the waiver wire. Then we move on to another player who I have mentioned previously, Royce O'Neal. I mean, if you're getting a starter on one of the top teams and they're going to play like around 30 minutes per game, odds are you're going to get some decent production and he's going to have a few really good nights. He had a 16-point game against Toronto. Not really going to contribute a lot in the scoring category, but he's a really solid defender. He could get you a few steals on the season. He's averaging a steal and a half per game. And yeah, not much else out, not much else outside of that, excuse me. I mean, the rebounds are nice. Just an added bonus, really. But if I'm streaming Royce O'Neal in a points league, he's only rostered in, what, 8% of leagues? That probably is a bit high, but I would consider him must roster as well for, like, my 16-team plus leagues. And yeah, that's going to do it for him. And then we have someone, if you were saying that everyone is rostered in your league, man, if this guy is rostered, I, he's rostered in 0.1% of leagues, and he is out currently. He's out with an ankle injury, unhealed ankle sprain. He's going to try to return to Portland on Tuesday. I would wait till Tuesday, and then if there is a report that he's playing and Jokic isn't, Zeke Najee is someone that I would consider streaming because he is sort of their, he's not their backup center, but he does get a few minutes when Jokic doesn't play. He got 20 minutes against Indiana, and he had 18 against Portland. So I think it is worth the stream. I mean, like I said, wait and watch the reports. If you don't know about Fantasy Labs on Twitter, I would check them out to see when Jokic is going to be coming out, coming back, when Najee is going to be coming back into the lineup. Could be worth a stream. Like I said, this one's very dependent, but he's only rostered in 0.1% of leagues. So if you're in a 20 team and he it, it's announced that he's playing and Jokic isn't, I think it is a must stream for that day in specific. And then if he continues to be healthy while Jokic misses some time, then I mean, might as well keep him and get some good value out of him. And then the last player on the list, rostered in 2% of leagues, Dwight Powell of the Dallas Mavericks. He's had a pretty solid season, honestly, for fantasy. In terms of fantasy value for like deep, deeper team leagues, he's averaging around 20 fantasy points per game, which is, if you're in a 20 team, that's pretty much all you can ask for, honestly, is around 20 fantasy points per game. That is ideal for like a late round pick or like a waiver wire ad. He's getting a decent amount of minutes. He's probably the best center option on the Mavericks, in my opinion, if you don't count Porzingis as a center. He's probably the best if they go like with Porzingis at the five, but you know what I mean. He's had a few decent games, not going to contribute too much in any one category. It's mostly just the rebounds. Maybe gets a few lobs from Luka here and there as, you know, the whole offense goes around Luka. But yeah, I would consider him a must roster. I'm going to stream him this week if I'm in a 20-team league and he's on the waiver wire. Because, I mean, who knows? Maybe he'll have a really good game. A few solid performances get around the 20 points per game that he is averaging for fantasy. And that's just something that I don't really want to pass up on if he's on the waiver wire. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. This is more of a longer one, but I really wanted to cover like however many team leagues. I just wanted to make sure everybody had some waiver wire guys that I would roster for this week, who I would stream, who I would check out, who I would absolutely consider must roster, like the guys I mentioned at the start of the video. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to check out Parlay Play through the link in the description. Use the code the Basketball Philosopher when you sign up and get a free $10 upon entry. And yeah, that's going to do it for the video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.